Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm excited to be here. It was, uh, I tell you, you know, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny how, you know, the Lord works, you know, because sometimes when we get to uh, places where we have to go on spiritual endeavors, that enemy will fight you tooth and nail. And I'm telling you, he was scratching and he was clawing and he was trying to throw sucker punches and everything. But you know what I kept telling him? I kept telling him, I'm a dead man walking. Not only am I a dead man walking, but I'm a resurrected dead man walking, you know? And it's amazing because God raises the dead. And if I can't tell, anything about, tell anybody anything about Jesus, one thing I can tell them, God raises the dead because he raised me up. You know, and we all get to those plateaus and those places where things are just low and and you just don't know what in the world's going on. We just run into those obstacles and we run into those times and we wonder, where is God? Have you ever felt that way before? You ever asked that question? And in the midst of me asking God, where are you? I said, well, obviously, if you're not here and you're not there, them where are you and I basically kind of walked away for for a few years didn't go to church just upset mad angry so on and so forth but I thank God that even in those mists and even in those times when we're upset and we're down and we're low that God always seems to bring somebody into your life to give you hope and that's what he began to do. God said, boy, you need to go to church. I said, I ain't going to church. And I said, not only am I not going to church, I said, you can't make me go to church. What's the point? And I'm, and I'm just rattling on to him. Da, 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 da. And he says, you're going to go to church. And I said, no, I'm not. And then slowly, but one thing, you know, one cool thing about it was, even though I was mad at God and I was upset and I had all these different things going on, I still turned to God. Even though I was in the back of my mind upset and all this other stuff, but I still kept turning to him. And I still kept watching Christian TV and I, and I still kind of kept reading my word and I still kept praying and I still kept seeking. And eventually he began, the, the tide began to turn and he began to start developing things. I didn't realize it, but he started developing things. And then, you know, hanging out with pastor and counseling and, and just Michelle and, and just, just different things started happening. And eventually it, was, it, just, it just woke up. I'm going to church. And God said, see, I told you he was going to church. <laughs> and I said, yes, Lord. And here's the reason why. I started going to church and here's the reason why I do what I do here's the reason why I live and here's the reason why I put a smile on my face every day and when I go to work every day and I shine for the Lord every day because he taught me about confidence in him and that's what we're going to talk about today having confidence in God well first let's let's start off we're gonna there's two of course you know the Bible is written in Hebrew and we know that the Bible is written in Greek so we're gonna look at it from the Hebrew perspective today okay so now the Hebrew word for confidence is batak everybody say batak batak it's b-a-t-a-c-h batak but talk is to have confidence. And let me give you a couple of uh, definitions about confidence. It says, radically, it's to be open. Everybody say, be open. Be open. Come on now, be open. be open. See, it says, where there was nothing hidden, a person would feel safe. Or in other words, it's another word that's rendered to trust. But see, I like that word, a safe place. You see, as Christians, we're not only supposed to be in a safe place, but we're supposed to create a safe place. This is what my, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, let's demolish that thing, you know. But, <laughs> but it's to be safe. It's 
to trust in. It's to, to be bold in some places. It's to be secure. It's to cause to trust. Okay? It's to cause to trust. Now watch this. See, when I'm in batak or when I'm in confidence with God, that means I'm in my safe place. This is my safe place. So the cool thing about it is when I'm in my safe place, oh man, I can smile. I can dance if I want to like pastor. You know, I, I, I get hugs. I get love. I get so much in this safe place. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, real quickly, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on that. But let's turn to Psalms 118, verse 8 and 9. Psalms 118, verse 8 and 9. And you're going to put that on the big screen for me, Brother Will. Psalms 118, verse 8 and 9. And I'm going to make this a little, a little interactive, so y'all, y'all just kind of flow with me, okay? Everybody there? Psalms 118, verse 8 and 9. And this is what it reads. It says, it is better to trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence. Everybody say confidence. Come on now, say confidence. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Verse 9, it is better to trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Everybody say confidence. confidence. Come on, confidence. So what does the writer mean? And this is the question I'm asking everybody. What does the writer mean when he talks about putting your confidence in men? Why should we not put confidence in man? Just speak out. Come on. What drop you and then kick you to boot? Boom. Every single time. Is that true? But we're supposed to put our batak or our confidence, our confidence, this is my batak, our confidence in the Lord. Okay? So we know the main reason why, in general, why we can't put trust in man is because in our natural state, we're unregenerated. Is that right? That's right. Come on now. Now, see, I, I, I really want, see, this is what transformed my life. So I'm not just talking just words. I'm talking this is what changed me from the inside out. It's like, it's like this. Um, I told a friend of mine this story today. It's like the, boy, the little boy got in trouble, and the mama told him, go, go in the corner and sit down. I ain't going in the corner and sit down. Son, go in the corner and sit down. You can't make me. I ain't going in the corner and sit down. And then I know what my mama would say. Boy, if you don't go in that corner, I'm going to give you something to cry about, you know. So the boy went in the corner, right? And, and, then, and then he looked at his mama and say, yeah, I may have to go in the corner and sit down, but inside I'm standing up. <laughs> and that's confident. See, your outside circumstances may look to the world like you sitting down, like you laying down, that you ain't doing nothing. But on the inside, we're supposed to be standing up. On the inside, we're supposed to have that batak. We're supposed to have that confidence that only can come from my safe place. You see what I'm saying? Okay, now, let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. This is good. This is good. This is good. And, 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 I, and, I, and I say, Pastor, thank you. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. See, I, I, I was so all about doing this type of thing, and then when I walked away from the Lord, I basically squashed my gift, said I wasn't going to preach, I wasn't going to do none of this stuff no more. And look at the Lord, how he turns it around. How he turns it around. How he turns it around. Okay, Galatians chapter 5. Let me get there myself. Okay, Galatians chapter 5. Now, we're going we're gonna to take some time through this. And, and, and let's look at the perspective from the unregenerated man. That means the man that's not saved, okay? So, Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to look at, we're going to start with verse 19, and then I'm going to read 21. Make sure, okay, good, got plenty of time. Everybody there? Amen. Okay, now watch this. Now, the doings or the practices of the flesh are clear. It's obvious. They are immorality, 
impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill-tempered, selfishness, division, dissensions, party spirits, there's a lot of that going on, factions, sex with particular opinions and heresies, envy and drunkenness, carousing and the like. And I'm going to pause right there. So we know that that's just how the world operates. That, that's just, I mean, it's not a given. So now we know why I can't put my trust in a man or why I can't put my trust or my, at least my confidence in people because this is their heart. And, and, and if they're not safely and secure in their patak, which they don't even have, then you're just kind of spinning your wheels. It's just like what the scripture says, don't throw your, pine, or your, your, your pearls before the swine because what are they going to do? They're going to trample all over you. And we can see that. We can look at the news today and we can see all the most heinous things. I heard something uh, just the other day because the boys always love listening to radio and I think it was D.L. Hughley. And he was saying that somewhere in the Middle East, he's crazy, uh, somewhere in the Middle East, uh, a group of men took a little boy. I think he was like maybe between eight and ten, tied him to a bed and just maliciously just unfortunately was raping the little boy. Now here's the kicker. On top of that, they told our military that if you see stuff like that, stand down. I told my brother, I said, man, they, they would just give me some kind of dishonorable discharge because I'm going to go capping and blowing and shooting and, and just getting gangster with it. Because, I mean, if you see, you see, I mean, a helpless little boy and then our military is told to stand down. I'm wondering where you are if you stood down. What kind of person? I mean, if you're going to stand, if, if you're not, you're supposed to be protecting us or protecting people or doing whatever you're supposed to be doing over there, even though I know it's so many type of unrest and all that other stuff. But stuff like that, I can't I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't watch something like that happen. You know what I'm saying? I would have to respond. But again, this is this is what we're talking about when we're dealing with unregenerated hearts. You know, they're cold, they're wicked, they're vicious, so on and so forth, right? So now we know what they're ungodly, they're unregenerated. But let's take a look at the, our people, the regenerated folks, all right? So let's look back at verse 21, okay? Now, he said at the top of it, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. Now, watch this. And he says, and I warned you beforehand, and just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? But, everybody say but. but. Thank God for the buts. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the work which is his presence within and accomplish, accomplishes is Love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humble, uh, humility, self-control, restraint, uh, what is that, Con continence, thank you, against such there is no law, just say, everybody say, there is no law. Keep that in mind because we're going to come back to that. There is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to Christ, watch this, and those who belong to Christ Jesus the Messiah have what? Crucified the flesh. They have what? Crucified the flesh. They have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature with its passions and appetites and desires. Verse 25. Now watch this. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And if by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward, walk in the line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. But verse 26 says, and let us not become what? Vainglorious, Vainglorious self-conceited, competitive, 
challenging and provoking and irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. No, 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 no. That's, that's a whole lot, right? Now, the one thing I want to focus on is the word when it says, do not be conceited. Everybody say conceited. Now, we're going to go back to that law thing, but just let's check this out about conceited. It says the root from the origins of the word conceited is the word conceive. OK, everybody with me? Now, watch this. It's an idea, a thought or a, a an exaggerated concept, an exaggerated opinion of oneself or vanity. So in other words, if somebody is the if the believer is operating in conceit, then another word for that is pride. OK, and pride for people are insecure people. But see, but when I'm in my batak, I'm what? I'm secure. You see what I'm saying, Christian? Watch this now. So if I'm operating in the flesh, that I'm obviously not secure. There's something in my relationship with God that's not secure. You see what I'm saying? Because if I'm secure, then according to this word, if I'm walking by the Holy Ghost, then these actions would not be a part of my life. That's right. See, we got to talk real talk, people. That's right. Because he, here's the thing. See, and I'm going to get on a little side note. See, with Batak, if I'm secure, right, I'm getting a little ahead of my notes, but if I'm secure and I'm operating and I'm walking in the Holy Ghost, that means, come here, bro. Come on, 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 hurry. You see, you see, stay right there. See, if I'm operating in this, then I'm able to bring him in here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now what? But see, if I'm not... So that's, see, but see, that's the thing. See, if I'm walking in the safety, then the people that I get around, they're going to experience the safety of Jesus. That's why when they look at you, they say, man, there's something different about you. That's right. Why is there something different about you? Because I'm operating in the batak. I'm operating in my confidence. My confidence comes from my safety place in the Lord. And therefore, I can walk and I can carry myself out in public, and you're going to feel that. That's right. See, everybody wants to feel that, but that's, that's how you're supposed to feel. But see, if I'm walking, watch this, if I'm walking in conceit, then I remove myself from my safe place. You see what I'm saying? I remove myself from the safety and the security of God. And then watch this. Remember when we we're talking about the law? Remember what we said? I said, law, when you remove yourself from this place, then now you put yourself in a whole nother law. You see what I'm saying? A whole complete nother law. You're operating in the law of insecurity. The wages of sin is, you see what I'm saying? So now you wonder why this, why, wait a minute, wait a minute. God, why, why, why aren't you blessing me? What's, go, what's, what's happening here? What's, what's, what's going on here? It's because, see, I got from out my safe place. You see what I'm saying? When I'm walking in the spirit, then I can operate in love and joy and peace and all the things that come with the spirit. But as soon as I step out of that, now I'm operating in the law of sin and death. Come on, Christians. Paul is saying this to us. You see? So watch this. I, I, we, we had a little lively discussion in uh, Sunday school, and, and, and the brother was saying, and, and I, he was so well-spoken. I love what he said. But the main thing is, he says, I, I'm struggling with my, com, uh, my compassion. And aren't we, right? We're supposed to love people, right? Well, then how is it then? Okay, watch this. So if I'm in this safe place, then I can truly operate in the purity of compassion, right? But watch this. See, if I operate under the law of sin and death, you see what I'm saying? Then what's happening is, is I'm operating on a whole nother level, a whole nother thing. You see? And, and, and therefore, because I'm operating in that, I'm not manifesting the fruit of the spirit, y'all. You see? This is real, guys. 
And so therefore, when I get around other unbelievers and they start smoking and joking and cursing and carry on, then you kind of find yourself start kind of slipping into that too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and I, and I get around, I'm around the best of them. So, so I have to really, you know, watch that mess. But, but, and it's happened, and, and therefore, watch this. And because I'm not operating or walking in the Spirit, or I'm not secure in my batak and my confidence in God, then that means that I can be blocking people from the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? And, and like I said, and when the young man says, well, you know, I'm having a hard time with compassion. Well, the problem is if I'm operating under the law of sin and death, then I'm going to pick and choose how I'm going to be compassionate. And how can you pick and choose how to be compassionate when the Lord said be compassionate? That's right. See, we pick and choose. Oh, I love, oh, brother, oh, God bless you, I'll help you. But then you see this cat over here, and you're just like, hm, forget you, dog. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. See, we pick and choose, and then the scripture went on to say, then when it's time for you to lay hands and people get healed, then the healing powers of God are supposed to flow through you. But because I'm not operating in batak, but I'm operating under the law of sin and death, and when it's time to heal and lay hands and touch, the power is impeded. And how many of us are walking around with impeded power? Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on now. I don't want to walk with impeded power. I want all the juice God got for me. I want to roll with everything that he got for me. Because, see, I've seen the darkness of a man's heart. I've seen the dark side of things. And, it, and, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. It messed me up for a while. I said, man, Lord, I, I, I knew about spiritual warfare. Lord, I prayed. Lord, you know, I fasted. Lord, I gave. I, I helped people. I loved people. And man, and the devil just came with sucker punch after punch after punch after punch where I got to the point where I said, Lord, I, I, I ain't got no more, man. I ain't got no more. I can't do this, God. I'm done. I, I, I can't do this. They, he, he won. He got me, Lord. He got me, Lord. And I just turned my back and I walked away. And see, if my brothers and sisters who said that they were with me and were really with me understood the confidence of God, you would, you would be there for me. We're supposed to be there for one another, not to pick and choose what we want to be there for. The Bible says be there for your brothers and your sisters because the time is coming and when the Antichrist come and when the, you, you never know. Taliban can be operate, getting ready to blow up something right now. What's going to happen when it comes down to this? And let's say, oh, Will, you got food? Oh, Will, please, come on, come on, come on. And I said, you think I didn't know what you was doing? Psh. This is real, guys. And I don't want to be, do anything to impede the power of God. That's why I got to walk in the Holy Ghost. When I get up in the morning, we got to do this, folks. Because, and not only that for yourself, but what about the people who really don't know Jesus? And now because I'm operating under the law of sin and death, like I said, you're impeding other people, y'all. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Not in any circumstances, not in any form, not in any shape. You see? And the sad thing about it is, the second thing about that, that word conceited, that's, that's a just, I'm sure Paul was probably pulling his hair out, is the fact that because we're conceited, our conceit can turn into jealousy yeah. of one another. Mm -hmm. let's, look, let's look back at the scripture. Let's look back at verse 26. Come on. It, said, it says, Let us not become vainglorious, self-conceited, competitive, challenging, provoking and irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. 
So the question is, you have to really ask yourself, and you got to be real with the Holy Ghost about it, is, is, is how, how am I viewing other people? Because see, once I step outside this safe place, if I'm not secure, see, watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, when, when I'm in my patak, I can see you the right way. See, I can love you, sister. I can love you, my brother. I can hug you and, and just, you know, hey, man, it's all good, man. You see what I'm saying? But as soon as I operate, step outside my batak and start to operate in the sin of death, then these things start creeping up in my flesh. The self-conceit, the competitive, the, the, the challenging, the provoking, the irritating to one another. These not ought to be so among believers. And don't think that the unbelievers aren't seeing us operate in these things. They ain't dumb. They're already operating in it. They recognize it. You see? They know what time it is. They know they ain't living right. They know what they're doing is wrong. But see, when I'm operating in this, they're going to get a sense. There's a sense about this cat, man. I mean, you know, he ain't cussing. You know, the sister, you know, she, she's doing her paperwork right. She, she's not cheating on the clock. So, you see, that's why it's critical for you to have confidence in God. Now, watch this. Here's a prime example right here. Everybody turn to 1 Samuel chapter 18. This is a great example of what we're talking about uh, operating in the batak as opposed to not operating in the batak. 1 Samuel now, is everybody getting something out of this? Because like I said, it, this, this, this is what I live by every day, and I'm just not saying that. This is what got me from out the grave, because I was in the grave. I wanted to commit. I never thought about that in a, a day in my life, and I always say, how do people consider or say they want to commit suicide? And I remember one day, man, I said, Lord, just, just, just take me, please. I, 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 can't, I can't do this no more. Just, just, just take me. I want to die. But now when I hear people who say they want to commit suicide, I have a whole new compassion for them now because I've been there and I understand that. See, see when you learn to operate in the batak, you really learn how to have compassion like Jesus said. Like when he was looking over the city and he began to wet because he knew, he said, I I'm weeping for you. Why don't you guys come, come under the batak. Come and get the confidence from me. I got you. I got this. You see? Okay. Everybody there? So 1 Samuel chapter 18, and let's start at verse 5. Okay, now watch this. Keep in mind now, confidence. The scriptures that we just read, okay, in Galatians, all right? Watch this. And David went out wherever Saul sent him, and he prospered and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and it was satisfactory both to the people and to Saul's servant. And as they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistines, watch this, the women came out of all the Israelite towns singing and dancing to meet King Saul with timbrels, songs of joy, and instruments of music. And the women responded as they laughed and frolicked, saying, watch this, Saul has slain his thousands, David, his ten thousands. Watch this. And what does it say? And Saul was what? Very angry. Come on, people. And Saul was what? Very angry. For the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me, they only have ascribed a thousand. And then what more can he have but Watch this. Verse 10, please. And then the next day, what happened? And a what? An evil spirit. Come on. And ne the, then uh, the next day, an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul. And he raved madly in his house while David played the leery with his hand and at, as at other times... <laughs> And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin 
for he thought, I will pin David to the wall, and David evaded him twice. You see, he, King Saul, was not operating in the Batak. Because had he been operating in the Batak, he would have done what God told him to do. But because he decided to operate under the law of sin and death, now here's the man that's doing what God has called him to do. Here's a man that's operating in the Batak, operating in the confidence of God. And now this brother want to get mad because he's operating in a whole nother system. See, watch this. Here's a very important lesson. Don't get mad at somebody that got their shine on. Is that true? That's right. Yeah, yeah. We see other people and how they operate in their gifts and how they operate in their talents and they're doing their shine on and we're so quick to get jealous. That's right. Amen. That's right. To the point where, because now watch this, because see, you don't have no protection when you're operating in the law of sin and death and the bird says, and the God allowed the spirit spirit an evil spirit to come upon Saul where he wanted to kill David and how many times we not even knowing allowed one of those spirits to come up on us and we begin operating in a way that's not pleasing to God because, see, watch this. Because, see, the devil's tricky about it. See, see he'll, he'll do it like this. See, he'll give you something that, oh, that's not bad. Oh, come, come, come on, dude. That, that, that's just, come on, man. You ain't hurting nobody. Okay, so you took the one step. And then he's going to bring another opportunity. Oh, come on, homeboy. You done, see, sister, you done did this one time. I mean, go ahead. And you take another step and another step and another step and another step. And now you're throwing javelins. Now you're angry. Now you're hating. And when you're hating, you ain't keeping it 100, as everybody say. See, see, God going to keep it 100. Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, God going to keep it 100 straight from top to bottom all about. So if I really want to understand this, if I want to understand this, then I better keep it 100. Is that all right, folks? Come on now. We, 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 everybody, everybody with me? Amen. You, see, you see what happened to Saul? Mm-hmm. David was just doing what he was supposed to do. And when you have confidence in God, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. And so if, so if Pastor Bob comes and say, hey, brother, man, didn't this brother, man, he's on fire, brother for the Lord, and just keep raving about the brother, we shouldn't in the back corner be like, hm, why are you always talking about him? He don't never say nothing about me. Oh, 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 see, yeah, yeah, see how, you see how Pastor Bob operate? <laughs> you know, and, and, and the reason, and listen, there, I, I really believe, I don't know why, I, I mean, I know why God gave it to me, but I, I think what God is trying to do in this last days, it's just like doing that spring cleaning in the house, you know? He just wants to do some, just, just, some, some, just get some dust, you know, and, and, you know, let's just get rid of the dust. Let's just get rid. So, so that because the whole ultimate goal is we're supposed to be here for the lost, number one. And then we're supposed to be here for one another. Scripture says, love one another as I have loved you. And I can't pick and choose how I'm going to love you. It's either I'm going to love you or I'm not going to love you. You're my sister or you're not my sister. See right here, Saul was acting like a carnal man. We're not supposed to be carnal Christians. We're called to walk in the spirit. See, I'm walking in the spirit here. I'm walking, walking, walking. This is what I practice every day. And I take it with me because everywhere I go, there goes the kingdom. Do I need to say that again? Everywhere I walk, there goes the kingdom. See, that's why, that's why when they're feel, that's why they're feeling the batak. They're feeling the confidence just radiate from us, and we envelop them in our batak, in our confidence, guys. You see, something so simple, really, 
But it really is profound. And I think that that's what this is the message that Paul was trying to get to the people. Okay, let me make sure. I, okay, okay, 15 minutes. Okay, I'm good. Okay, so I'm just like, emulating my pastor there. Okay, so now let's look at some solutions, okay? Let's look at some other solutions. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 3 and let's look at verse 3. Okay. Philippians 3, verse 3. Make sure everybody's there. If somebody's getting something out of this, say amen. 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 Everybody ready? Okay, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Watch, watch this now. Listen to what Paul says. For we Christians are the true circumcision who worship God in the what? In the Spirit and by the Spirit of God and exalt and glory and pride ourselves in Jesus. Not pride yourself on yourself, but pride yourself in Jesus, okay? All right? And watch this. And put no what? Come on. And no what? No confidence or dependence on what we are in the flesh and on outward privileges and physical advantages and external appearances. So in other words, no confidence in the flesh. Come on, everybody say no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. None. Because we know, as they always say, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. Yeah, and this is a hard work now. This ain't easy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to come up here and say, oh, man, you know, walking in the Holy Ghost and walking in the Spirit, man, this is a cakewalk. Man, this is something easy. Because I could tell you, I, I mean, every little thing, the enemy was just trying to get me, trying to get me down, trying to get me upset. And the Bible says that even God will use your enemies to bless you. And I, and I had the brothers just preaching to me, man, brother, let me tell you something. I know you look like you're kind of down a little bit, brother, but Jesus got you, bro. <laughs> and I said, man, Lord, I love this dude, man. I, I, I don't, he says he's born again. I'm going to take him at his word, <clears throat> you know. But, you know, and they, they, they preaching to me. Right. Unregenerated, and as I look at it and see, you know, according to Scripture. But, you know, hey, man, brother, Jesus got you this morning. Hold on, this morning, man, just, just you know, one of those things. Am I, am I good? Okay, I'm sorry. And, and just, just kind of feeling, you know, a little way to the spiritual, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then uh, we're cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up a bunch of stuff. And then I walk and I look, and there was a giant cross on the ground. A big old cross. It was, uh, we were tearing down fence, and the fence that we tore down, just one particular piece, was in the form of a T. I said, now look at Jesus right there. And then the brother on the bull on the bulldog, yeah, brother, that's T. I told you that's Jesus. <laughs> I told you, brother, God can do it. Don't let that devil beat you. He keeps telling me now, preaching to me. Don't let that devil beat you, brother. And I picked that cross up, and we, we, we both shouted and rejoiced and had a good time. Like I said, I mean, hey, I go with it. But immediately my batak came back. And I said, Lord, thank you, because that's what I needed right here, right now. I, I got it from the brother <laughs> who talked about <laughs> everything under the sun. Lord, we have some interesting conversations. To the brother now talking around saying, D -d don't let the devil beat you. Don't let the devil beat you. And I'm just sitting right here, you know, and I'm like, okay, Lord. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now let's turn to, okay. Ten minutes. Ephesians chapter four. So we understand we put no confidence in the flesh, right? Amen. No confidence in the flesh. Uh, Ephesians chapter four. Uh, Ephesians chapter four 
And let's start with verse 1 through, through 7. Now, this is pretty powerful. Everybody there? Amen. Okay. I, therefore, the prisoner for the Lord, appeal to and beg you to walk, lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called. Everybody say, I have been called. I have been called. I have been called. See, the divine calling to which you have been called with behavior that is a credit to the summons to God's service. Got that? Watch this. Living as become you with complete lowliness of mind, humility, and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, with patience, watch this, bearing with one another and making allowances because you what? Love one another. Watch this, verse 3. Be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the what? The harmony and oneness of and produced by the who? The spirit in the binding power of peace. There is what? One body and one spirit, just as there is also one hope that belongs to the calling you receive. Now see, when you think about confidence now and you read that scripture, don't it put it in a whole different light? The bottom line, what Paul is saying is, God has already equipped you to be you. That's right. See, God didn't equip you to be me or Pastor Bob or whoever. God's equipped you to be you. But because we don't read this, you see what I'm saying? Then we remove, and God is trying to, like a little chicken, shoo you under the security and put you in the place of the batak. But sometimes we fight in God and we just continuously operate in the law of sin and death. You see what I'm saying? So this should give you hope. This should give you some peace of mind because God has made me uniquely me. So kids, that's why when you go to school, you ain't got to flex about what you're wearing. Okay, dog, I see you rocking the whatever, whatever. That's cool. But see, my confidence ain't in my LJs. My confidence ain't in my Jordans. See, my confidence is in, the, I got the batak, baby. I, I got this right here. What, what, see, see what, what, you, what you rocking? Oh, you rocking Jordans. Okay, well, let's see what them Jordans going to do for you when you... Okay. And then, and then, watch this. And then that devil won't bring that, bring that fly, brother. What's up, girl? I'm rocking the batak, baby. Look at it. Come on, girl. Give me that number. You know what's up. And, and the world is so chaotic. And me and the brother was the same brother that was preaching me about don't let the devil get you. <laughs> I said, brother, did you? I just was watching this commercial, man, and, and it just flipped me, man. But I, I mean, I wanted to get your opinion on it. I said, brother, did you see this show about dating naked? Oh, brother, I watch that show all the time. <laughs> now, this is the same one that was telling me, oh, don't let the devil get you now. Don't. Oh, man, he was at, he said, man, I watch that thing all the time, man. I said, really? I think about this. Dating naked. Lord, have mercy. What is it? I mean, but again, that's just the unregenerated. But if you're regenerated and you're a believer, you're supposed to be in the right. batak and in the confidence of God. What you watching? Okay. So it's, it's, it's almost like maybe the spirit is saying to us that we have to be a little bit more introspectly or introspective when it comes to the word. Just don't read the word, read the word. You know what I'm saying? 
We got to read this. And what, what, what is this thing saying, Lord? Now, let's look at verse 5. Let's look at Ephesians 5. Okay, got seven minutes. Okay. He said, For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Verse 6. One God and Father of who? Us all. Watch this. Who is above all, sovereign above all, pervading all, and living in us all. Now watch this, verse 7. Yet grace, God's unmerited favor, watch this now, was given to each of us, what? Individually. How? Individually. Individually. And watch this, and not indiscriminately. Lord, help me. Thank you. So he wasn't discriminating on, on, on the grace. Okay? But watch this. But in different ways, in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bountiful, bounteous gifts. See, each and every one of us have... A gift. That's right. And this scripture right here is saying God wasn't discriminating when, when, when he gave Pastor Bob his gift or gave Mike his gift or Rachel the gift or whoever. He was not discriminating. He's given each and every one of us a gift. So in other words, if you if you want me to just really be plain about it, stay in your lane. Quit trying to come in mine. I say that lightly, I'm sorry. I say that lightly. <laughs> and very gently. And you know what? I ain't coming in yours. Okay? I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't roll. I can't do what you... So, so this is why the Lord said... When the thing about it is, it's critical for us to know and have confidence in God. Because, see, when I have confidence in God, see, see, it, it, it said, they said one of the, 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 uh, the definitions is uh, to be open. See, it's open. See, there's no, no barriers. There's no barriers in God. See, my love has no barrier. If my love has a barrier, then I'm not having confidence in God. If my mercy has a barrier, you see, and on and on and on and on, y'all get the picture. There's no barriers in the batak. There's no barriers when I have confidence in the Lord. Amen? So, so that's, that's what makes us so supernatural. See, we're super guys and super girls. We're superheroes. For real. You know, you can be Batman, brother. You know, you be Batman and uh, who's going to be Robin? <laughs> I ain't going to be Robin now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be Robin. <laughs> I want to be the Flash, you know. But, 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 but you see how cool this is? And, and, and because, because it's open, I can invite anybody in this space. When I go to the grocery store, I'm inviting people in this space. When I go to work, I'm inviting people in this space. When I go to school, I'm inviting people in this place. So wherever I go, I'm inviting people in this place because it's a safe place. You know how unstable our world is right now? And how insecure and unsafe people, people are? We're the ones that brings the safety to the lost and dying world. But if you're not in the batak, you see, if you're not in this place, if you're not in your safe place, that means that you're unstable. And I can't lift up an unstable brother if I'm unstable myself because we both going to fall into the ditch. Thank you, brother. You see? Two can't walk together unless they agree. So if me and Jesus, when I'm in here, me and Jesus are agreeing. But me and the devil, we, you know, you can agree with them if you want to, but, well, we know what we get out of that. 
You see, you see what I'm saying? Okay, uh, okay, two more minutes, two more minutes. Let me see what I, where we go here. Okay, uh, let's look. We still got Ephesians 4. Can you put up verse 11, please? Verse 11, Ephesians 4 and 11. Now watch this. I think, and, and obviously this was just an issue back in Paul's day, and I think this is why Paul had to stress this. Now watch this, watch, watch this. We got, we got two minutes, guys, watch this. Now, and his gifts were what? Varied, okay? He himself appointed and gave men to us. Watch this. Some to be apostles, special messengers, some to be prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, some to be evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some to be pastors, shepherds of his flock and teachers. His intention, verse 12, was the perfecting and the full equipping of the who? The, his saints, his consecrated people that they should do the work of ministering watch this toward building up Christ's body the church so all your giftings is part of the building process as part of the building material to build up the church that's why it's important for you to stay here because if you stay here then that means that that door is not going to be on the wall or the window might not be there or the roof might not be there some of us are a door some of us are a roof some are the carpet the chair whatever we are all individual pieces but the pieces come together to build the church that's why when pastors say we are the church we literally are the church amen come on man let's give God a hand clap for that we are the church and you should be proud of your gifts you should say Lord thank you that you've blessed me Thank you for the gift. I love you, Lord. Lord, I'm going to put my gift in and my confidence in you. And Lord, help me to walk in this baton. Help me to walk in confidence. Help me, Lord Jesus, because wherever I go, there goes the kingdom. And because I'm secure, may people feel the securing presence of your love when I walk into the grocery store, when I walk in my room, or, or when I walk at home, or when I go to work or wherever if I'm jogging let people just sense a security a securingness because they are insecure when you're operating in the law of sin and death there is no security people are looking for security in this life and we know that people do crazy things trying to find themselves trying to find what they really really are longing for and that is love. Everybody wants to truly be loved. And that's why I'm wrapping it up. That's why it is critical, church, for you to have confidence. Now, this, and this, this is just the Hebrew side. I ain't even got into the Greek. And maybe, but I'll just leave that up to the discretion of the man of God, the house, pastor of the house. But um, it's, it's critical. Because you can be the only Jesus that someone sees. You're it. You're on, baby. Living epistles read by all men. So the question is, what are they reading? What are they reading? What are you putting your confidence in? What are you putting your confidence in? Who are you putting your confidence in? Is my, is my, and if I'm putting my confidence in God, is it really, truly evident wherever I go? Because they're supposed to feel that. See, everybody looking to feel something. Well, let's give them, let's give it to them. You feel that? We don't come out and say it like that, you know. Maybe you feel my batak? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No, <laughs> could you imagine a Christian brother walk up to a Christian sister? Baby, you feel my batak in Jesus? <laughs> I'm sorry, 
I work around some crazy dudes, so we always come with off the cuff stuff. But anyways, I, I, I truly love you guys. Pastor, once again, thank you. I am humbled, seriously, before the Lord for this opportunity. I, I just I just love sharing, man. I mean, it's just it's just I just love it, man. You know, like I said, I, I'm just I'm just driving in my little lane. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get up in pastor's lane or nobody else's lane. I'm just in my little Yugo, you know, in my, in my little mini me car and just driving along. But but it's a critical. So 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 let's just wrap wrap it up. Let's pray real quick and then I'll give the mic back to pastor. OK, father in Jesus name. Lord, we want to thank you for this night. Lord, we, we laughed, we cut up, we had a good time, and we learned the word just like we always do every Wednesday night, how pastor does it, Father. Lord, um, I, I pray, Father, that as the word went forth, that hearts and minds and spirits were changed, Father God. And if we feel that change, we only know that that's the Holy Ghost. And we can be happy about that because God only convicts his children. So, Lord, if we're feeling any conviction, Father God, it has nothing to do with the, with the deliverer. It's the Holy Spirit. Because, Lord, I know that you're coming soon. And, Father, you want the church to be the church so that we can be an outreach to the lost and dying world, Father God. And not only an outreach to the lost, but an outreach to one another. Lord, Jesus prayed, let them and teach, help them to love one another. So Lord, let the, let the love that's already here, Lord, let it increase. Let our confidence increase in you from this day forward. May we determine in this new year by the Jewish calendar, this is the new year, that we say, Lord, I didn't get every, maybe I didn't get everything Brother Willie was saying, but I understand this. He said, your word said, that I'm supposed to have confidence in you, so teach me, Lord, how to have that confidence and how to walk in that confidence so that I can be a safe place to everyone whom I meet. Lord, I pray that you give everybody safe traveling mercies until we come again Sunday into your house to worship you. And in everything that you're doing right now in our lives and what you're going to do, we're going to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And all God's people say, amen, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Glory. Thank you. Thank you.